In this video, I'm going to talk about random effect model using mixed effect model. And there are three types of random effect model mainly, and random intercept model, and random slopes, uh, and random intercept and slopes. So we are going to talk about a concept of each model. And before we talk about specific about random effect, and let's review a concept of repeated measures analysis. And today's example is uh, dental growth data among 10 girls and measured at age 8 and 10 and 12 and 14. Okay, so each line indicate a single girl. So this is for measurement from a girl and this is for measurement from another girl. So there are 10 girls all together. And we use a uh, SPSS data set called growth.long.sav. This is the longitudinal data format. So let's go ahead to conduct the linear regression. And I know it's wrong to do linear regression, but I like to see what happens if you mistakenly conduct linear regression. So data set we have is this. And uh, again, we are only assessing effect of age on dental growth measures among 10 girls. So we are going to unselect boys measurements. And so if you go ahead to do linear regression. So let's use general linear model option for linear regression. And you would include, uh, you put the growth as a de dependent variable and age as a covariate. So the today's example, instead of comparing mean of growth at the different age uh, category, and we will compare slope of age. Um, okay, so SPSS consider age as continuous variable. And we put the age under model and continue. And uh, let's, okay, so let's click OK. And this is a result of this model. So what the model did is, uh, if we show the data with the graph, let's do scatter plots. Um, put the scatter plot in growth as y, age as x. Okay, so this is what this model did. So put the straight line over age and then assess whether the slope is positive or negative. And we know we can't really use linear regression because linear regression have assumption and say all observation have to be independent. And a quick way to check this assumption, go to your working data set and if the data set contain more than one line coming from a single patient, you are violating this assumption. So as you see, there are four lines from each patient in this data, so it's clearly a violated assumption. So we cannot use uh, linear regression for this data. But if you look at the outcome, and you can interpret this beta coefficient as average annual increase in dental growth measure, and that is 0.49. Um, 0.49 millimeter and which is statistically significant but we know this p-value is wrong because probability computation is based on all the observations are independent. So why it's wrong to use a linear regression? What's wrong if data are not independent? And this is an example we uh, saw in the previous video. So uh, these black dots indicate the data for CRP from a single patient. And these red dots indicate data from another single patient. Okay, so these two, um, there are two patients. One have a higher CRP value, and one has a lower CRP value. And then both patients, when they use catheter and CRP level increased. Okay, so uh, when you use linear regression and model assume all observations are independent. Therefore, it consider these observations are coming, these, these observations are coming from different patients 
these observations are coming from different patients. So uh, it assumes uh, these observations should be as different as data from two different people. So that's clearly a uh, biased p-value calculation. As you see, data from a single patient is a lot more uh, similar than the data f between two different patients. Okay. So in order to, one way um, to tell SBSS, and these are from same patient, and we somehow have to model uh, between patient variation. Okay. And so we tell there are difference between this person and that person. Okay. And then uh, by removing between patient variation, and in fact, and we can focus within patient variation. So when you consider whether catheter has impact on CRP, you don't really compare this observation to this observation, right? So those observations are from um, two different patients. Right? So you don't compare this observation to that observation that has no relevance, right? So when you want to see effect of catheter, and I'm sure you will compare this observation to the rest of this person's observation, right? So those have nothing to do with data from this person, okay? So uh, using random effect, so the goal, one of the goal in today's lecture is I want you to think how we can introduce difference between patient and so that we can remove between patient variation, then analysis can focus what happened within patient. The simplest way to express between patient variation, I call the word individuality. Among patient, <clears throat> maybe to fit separate regression line for each child. And we can easily do this by including ID in a linear regression. Okay. And so you plot this will give you different intercepts and slopes for each child. And however, this approach will cause severe overfitting in your analysis because you have too many parameters to estimate. And of course, we are not interested in assessing different effect of age for each child. So what I mean by is we could have performed linear regression, you know, which consider ID as a, another grouping category. So you could include ID as a fixed factor. It's a categorical variable. Okay. And then uh, you put I age and ID under the main effect and with the interaction between age and ID. And by doing this, okay, and you fit the humongous model. Okay. And uh, you have all the parameters uh, for indicating different intercept for different patient and also different slopes for different patient. And a uh, quick eyeballing. Okay, so by looking at this, you know ID number 11 person is reference category. And because uh, we did not change reference category and HPSS used the largest number as a reference category as a default. Okay, and so this intercept is uh, intercept for ID number 11 person and this uh, beta coefficient for age is slope for ID number 11 person. So ID number 11 person has black lines, so that's this one. So slope of this line is 0.675 and if you extrapolate this to uh, where age cross is 0 and intercept is 18.95. Okay? And if you look at Beta coefficient for ID equal to, and this is an intercept <clears throat> for ID number two person. So this is this dark blue. Okay, and then if you extrapolate this line and then intercept, uh, look at where it crosses age of zero, and that intercept is actually 4.75 millimeter lower than the intercept for ID number 11. Okay, so that's how you interpret this output. And then by allowing cross product term with age, and we are fitting different slope for different uh, girl. So if you look at ID equal 2 times age, and this is a slope for ID equal 2, this dark, uh, dark blue, and uh, 
comparing with this uh, black line, which is ID number 11. So slope of this dark blue is 0.125 more than the slope for this uh, black line, in the, um, which is slope for ID number 11. Okay, so by doing that, and we can actually model different slopes and different intercept for each patient, and then that's actually model difference between patient and patient individuality, or between patient difference. I use the word, these three words in, uh, interchangeably. And also, and what we want to look, is not really a comparison between two girls, right? And what we want to see is girl as a group and whether the effect of age is positive or not whether gross measurement increased by age or not so we are interested in population average so we are not really interested in comparing uh, between two different girls so this model actually do fit well with data but it does not really answer our question and one way to deal with between patient variation is to model coordination among repeated measures and that's what we learned in a previous video okay so looking at high coordinations indicate uh, much variation between patient and less variation within patient so uh, we actually achieve the goal by modeling correlation. So today we are actually uh, using a different approach. So rather than looking at correlation, and we are looking at the random effect. And the purpose of doing is actually the same. We are trying to introduce between patient variation, okay, patient individual individuality in the model so that we can remove between patient variation therefore analysis can focus what happened with inpatient which is a focus of repeated measures analysis okay so we already did a coordination method so we were already finished talking about coordination method so today we are not going to use coordination structure although we are going to talk about random effect the purpose is uh, uh, to remove between patient variations from the analysis and here we are interested in assessing the overall effect of age while still taking within patient similarity one way is to include id as a variable so we did that with the linear regression but problem with this approach is uh, we start comparing between girls which we don't want to do and also uh, this model is severely overfitted so let's say how many parameters you have you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 okay so we have 40 observations divided by 20 and that's two and that's too much to include in one model so somehow we need to find a way we spend less degree of freedoms okay less number of parameters and but maximize fit of the model to the data okay again we want to introduce between patient variation in analysis so that we can focus we by modeling it and we can remove that effect so that we can focus what happened within the patient All right so i'm introducing three different approach to model between patient variation without spending too many parameters okay and this is actual data okay so for each girl for each girl and we are fitting straight slope okay so this is a slope for this girl and then we have 10 different slopes okay and uh, we want to simplify this so that we can capture between patient variation and without modeling too many parameter so that's the goal so how about this model 
and what we do is we are introducing different intercepts for different patients while keeping a slope is the same for all patients and then instead of directly modeling uh, difference between each patient so the fixed effect model we compare difference in slope uh, between two patients I mean two girls okay but here instead of using uh, intercept as a fixed instead of modeling individual intercept differently what we are doing here is we are assuming these intercepts are randomly distributed around some mean value okay and with a standard deviation of some standard deviation okay and so uh, we are estimating only mean and standard deviation and then tell model and consider these intercepts are randomly distributed around this normal distribution so uh, we only estimate two parameters and while we introduce variation among intercepts for different patients different girls again okay. I keep saying patient right and the next one is random slopes and fixed intercept and what this does is and it allow only one intercept okay for entire cohort of 10 girls and but it allow random slopes so you see this slope is slightly different from this slope and these are slightly all of the slopes are slightly different so we are telling SPSS to consider these slopes are randomly distributed from normal distribution where mean and standard deviation is estimated from uh, data okay and so uh, this again spent two parameter and then while Okay, and it says fixed intercept, so we allow only one intercept. So if you extrapolate this to zero, okay, and you will see sort of um, all these slopes shared, one same intercept. Um, yeah, I think I probably have to extend this even further, and so that you can see these all converge to one point where the age is zero. Alright, so the last one is a random intercept and slopes. Okay, and this model tell SPSS and consider slopes are randomly distributed from normal distribution of mean and standard deviation estimated based on data. And then also intercept are uh, randomly distributed from normal distribution of some mean and standard deviation estimated based on this data so how many parameters we need to estimate for parameter and then SPSS will select uh, which structure will best fit the data while not uh, estimating too many parameters okay so that's what we are going to do so let me read what I have written here random effect models allow different intercept or in slopes so we have um, random intercept or random slope or random slopes and intercept for each patient by assuming that those intercept or and slopes are randomly distributed from a normal distribution with estimate mean and standard deviation of the set of intercept in slopes or slopes and that the model estimate only few parameters mean and st for intercept or slopes and yet it is able to allow to model between patient variation i.e. individuality this is more efficient than fitting a different line per patient that it preserves statistical power and through using random intercept in or slopes so finally uh, let's begin to fit random effect model using mixed effect model by the way the word mixed is coming from uh, effect are mixed from fixed effect and random effect so model is capable enough to fit two different kind of effect fixed and random effect that's where word mixed 
come from.